Welcome into my studio. I thought I'd give a short photographic tour of the pastel side of my studio. Um, it's very simple how I've set it out, out, but it's taken quite a while to get it to the stage where everything seems to be in the correct places for me and work in and I can do uh, small and large subjects with the least amount of back pain and things like that as well. So I'll just talk through what I'm going to show you on some photos and hope it's of some help. So as you can see, top right of the corner, you can see that lion there. So that's on a drafting table, like a drawing board. I've got it around about 60, 70 degree angle. I find that works well for me to be able to sit down on a chair with a nice straight back and uh, keeping my shoulders back, I can work there for, for quite a long time. Either side of that easel clamped on, you can just see right near enough in the center of the uh, picture are the um, daylight bulbs that I've got there. I've also got a fluorescent bulb in the ceiling above me, but I've got those daylight bulbs either side. And I've got a video showing exactly how I set up those and giving demonstrations as well. On the left, that's just one of those tables that, you, that unfolds. It's nice and easy like that because I can move it wherever I want to. So I've got my pans, as you can see, next to it. I've just got a few sticks out that I'm actually using at the time. And the same with the pans. I've got the complete set. But what I do when I start a drawing, or pastel painting, whatever you want to call it, I pull out the ones I'm going to use. Just those, nothing else. And I do something similar with the sticks. The only ones I'm actually using is just in that far right column. Um, I've just got the box open there just for ease of use, nothing more than that. And then I got my pencils over on the side of the drawing board. So let's take a closer look. So that's the pans on the left and um, you can get these holders with the pans. You can get smaller ones than this, which I really like, which holds probably something about nine or 10 pans in it. So I use those quite frequently. I've got um, some printer paper on the top. You will have seen me mix in on that normally in my videos. Underneath the pans is my uh, photo, reference photo, showing the colors I've dragged out. Once again, you'll see that on most of my videos. And that wooden box, you can see I've got some soft tools in there, the sponges and the sticks. That's a Jackson's pastel storage box. I've also got a video in depth showing that, opening it up and, and all that type of thing. So that's on the left of me. Now in the central section, that's my drawing board. There's that lion again that I'm working on at the moment. At the top, you can see my color swatches. So that's some gray pastel matte paper and all of the pencils that I use, I've put marks on there to make those swatches. There's a video showing that. That's really useful to go through my set. Once I pulled out the major colors on my reference photo, I go through my set of pencils, match them up and pull out things that are quite close. And those pencils, you can see, I've then got drawers on my um, magnetic drawing board, the white board you see there. I've got the pencil drawers, you, know, you can get them from Jackson's and all the other art supplies. And I put the pencils in there, randomly uh, in there. They should be in a bit more order than that. I'd preferably, I start off with them in my like groups of browns and greys and, and uh, yellow colors and things like that and end up uh, after a few hours they're all a little bit of a mess but you see I put those there and I've got nice strong magnets that's holding them on the board so I could put them up and down or in other positions if I actually wanted but the, the good thing about that is I'm not confused by the hundreds of pencils that I've now amassed okay so a good tip is rather than be looking for your pencils all the time pick out the ones that you think may be close to the colors you want you know, go a bit different each way as well and just pull those out and put them near. Don't have to be in a, in a drawer like that that I've got. I've got it on the angle so I can get to them easily and see them easily. They could be, you know, to the side of you instead. But that saves you going back and forth into your um, sets and ending up pulling out sometimes the wrong colors if it's perhaps the next day. Okay, so that's our central part. Now to the right of me, that's where my pencil storage boxes are. Once again, I've got them on one of those um, open up tables, those removable or movable tables. 
So I've got my pencil storage drawers. I've labeled them as well so I know which colors are in which. So I haven't got to go looking through them all the time. At the top, you can see bits and bobs. So that's my stumps, extra pencils I've got, you know, uh, erasers, sharpeners, anything like that is, is just up there. I've got a bit of scrap pastel matte paper, the color that I'm actually using. So if I want to test things out, especially at the beginning, Put a little mark on there, hold it up to my reference photo. Microfiber cloth, any type will do, but I find them the best for wiping your fingers after you've been blending and cleaning them. I've just got the pencils on top that I'm using at the moment. So once again, when I say on my videos, people ask sometimes what number pencil are you using, what number pencil are you using for that? I've often counted the pencils I'm holding in my left hand after about an hour or two of drawing and there's usually around about somewhere between 10 and 15 and that's what I end up putting down on the microfiber paper at the end of a session so I know I can pick up the exact colors that I was working on on a specific part the following session. So there's nothing extra special about the way I'm, I've laid everything out it just works for me. As I said it's as simple as it looks, it's taken me a long time to get to this stage where I can sit um, at that angle without a lot of back pain or shoulder pain. And um, the tools are there, ready for me to just grab. The lighting is nice and even as well. So I'm hopefully hoping that um, perhaps some of this you can apply in your own area. I'm fortunate I've got a uh, medium sized room that I can use. It's not quite high enough that I would really like so I'm sitting down pretty much all the time when I'm doing things. I'd rather be able to stand a lot more as well especially when working on the larger pieces. So hope that's helped you out and I'll see you all on the next video. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too. So there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong. Hope to see you there soon.